the greatest harm. Dreamy story, but almost practice. Practical experience shows that hatred, rage, and even annoyance not only exert a destructive influence on other people, but they also give feedback. This begins geistic in Gedanken. Intellectually, at the level of thoughts, a person who sends negative thoughts is polluting his own water, of which his body is 75, 90% composed, and giving it a negative charge. Many laboratories around the world have repeatedly carried out an experiment that produces similar results. Water from a single container was divided into two portions. One part was subjected to an outside influence that changed the structure and properties of that water. The water in the second flask acquired the same structure and the same properties after a certain period of time. Even if the two portions of water were a significant distance removed from each other. The water has uh, very important uh, photographic memory, we can say that, and also you can imprint it with very subtle energies, even from 10,000 kilometers. Does that mean that remote communication occurs between human beings who are essentially structures composed of water? In February 2005, Professor Vyacheslav Zvonikov and a group of his colleagues conducted an experiment to confirm or disconfirm the hypothesis that remote communication between people is possible. Two people are 15,000 kilometers apart. One is in Moscow, the other in northern South America near the city of Santa Elena. Here we have the virtual brain of the experiment's participants. During the 15 minutes before the experiment begins, there are no visible correlations. The least change in posture, pulse, or respiratory frequency is recorded. ECGs and EEGs are taken. Suddenly, the instruments register distinct changes. The two people separated by this enormous distance have somehow tuned themselves to the same wave. The instruments show synchronization of certain areas of their brains, of breathing, and pulses. How can this be explained? We don't yet have any answers to that question. So far, this is a scientific mystery. There is a hypothesis that the body's liquids play a part in this. Most likely, and we do have a good deal to confirm this, Liquids within the body also carry out a sort of information transmission function. So therefore our actions every day is very important. And our actions are related to nature, to the whole cosmos. So what one does doesn't just affect themselves, it affects other people and it affects the whole universe. We we studied water during solar eclipses and when comet Schumacher Levy was passing in those periods of time. And it turned out that a tissue culture in water, when a solar eclipse is in the offing, a week ahead of time before the eclipse, when everything is still far ahead, it already begins to fade. The system of the universe exists as a single perfect organism. All of its parts, including us and our Earth, are inseparably bound together by huge streams of information. And on our planet, water plays the key role in how the information is exchanged. In effect, it is the medium through which all nature is governed. The Chinese chronicles tell about the Taoist hermitage, Chang'e Chung, 
who is known to have met Repetidu with Genghis Khan for lengthy conversations. Once, when the country was being ravaged by an unknown epidemic, the ruler of Beijing asked the hermit to protect the people. He prayed, and the sickness retreated. In reply to numerous expressions of gratitude, the hermit said, prayer is not a thing. All it requires is faith. Exactly. Exactly. Many people think that thought or intention, the word we use is intention, can be imprinted on the water. That is a possibility. Like prayer, if you go to Lourdes, is it prayer that is imprinted on the water. The Holy Scripture contains these marvelous words. Nothing shall be impossible to him who believes. If he have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Here the mountain is just a metaphor, of course, but it helps us to understand the power of faith. All of mankind's sacred books contain stories about people who were able to create miracles because of their profound spiritual knowledge. Legend tells us that the sea parted before Moses because of his unflinching faith that the Lord would not abandon his people. We have totally undisputable evidence that prayer influences sick people to get better, and it has caused absolutely fantastical recoveries, such as the spread of gangrene stopping suddenly in a person who already had it. With holy water, when it's poured over sick animals or a dying plant, they revive. Those are the facts. And no physical chemist currently is able to understand it. They simply can't. January the 18th. It is the eve of the Orthodox feast of the Epiphany. Two flasks are filled with ordinary tap water. Early in the morning, one of them is set inside the church, near the vessel over which the sacrament of sanctification is to be performed. Every year on January 19th, the faithful and even non-believers hurry into churches to pick up some of the baptismal water. It is believed to possess extraordinary properties. In order to confirm or refute this, the two flasks were taken to the laboratory for study immediately after the service. Here the water was frozen in a cryogenic chamber and photographed under the microscope. The crystals of the tap water looked like a chaotic, diffused spot. While the water that had been in the church had the rectilinear, symmetrical form of a six-pointed star. It is well known that holy water has a very powerful and stable structure. This water can pass on its properties. Take only 10 grams of it and dilute it in 60 liters of common water and the whole amount will have the properties of holy water. Perhaps scientists will tell us sometime what prayer is. Perhaps scientists will tell us sometime what happens with human nature under the influence of divine grace. In my view, what Jesus did represented an informational influence in the water. He acted with his spirituality. He acted through higher spiritual powers. And it is now quite reasonable to imagine changing water in such a way that it would become fairly firm.
it could be radiation but could it be only subtle energy and we are very interested in how subtle energy can be detected by a material